In reviewing the response of Bendo Toji, number one bandit uh, kingpin in Nigeria, to the chief of defense staff, he called the chief of defense staff our leader. What does that mean? And in his response again, he said that government should confirm if he is standing by if it is not the government and people in Tinumbo's cabinet who are sponsoring them. So I want you to watch this video to the end to understand what is going on in Nigeria. Good morning, everyone. I want to draw the attention of Nigerians to the response of the bandit leader, Bendo Turji. Um, recently, the CDS Chief of Defense Staff General Christopher Musa said that he is going to do everything possible to arrest this man. But before then, in series of video, I have confirmed to Nigerians that this man said that he is untouchable. I mean, the leader of the bandits. He said he is untouchable that the governments are sponsoring him. He, he even gave us proof to show that, oh, the former Zamfara governor, Bendo Matawande, who is the current uh, minister of defense to Tinumbu, bought him, you know, some cars, including he laws and so on and so forth. So this man is bragging that he's not touchable by the government of Nigeria because they are the ones sponsoring him. So after uh, Christopher Musa now said that he is going to arrest him, the man responded. I watched the video in our sound language and someone interpreted that to me. But this is an article from uh, Shara Reporters. And it reads that the bandit kingpin, Bello Turji, dares Nigeria's defense chief to enlist Popondak Nderi to join fight, confirms imposing 50 million levy on Zamfara community. Now, before we go into the details of the article, I want to say this. You know, I know that um, the chief of defense staff, I don't know him. So, but I want to say this thing that it is not so important for you to be pointing, accusing finger at so many people who are not in Nigeria. You point finger to the east, west, but someone is here in your country telling you that you can't do anything, that your people are sponsoring him. Telling you that he put a levy on community 50 million as tax for them to pay to him. Telling you that he is in charge, he is in control. He every day he's making videos showing you everything. And this man is still in this country. What have you done to make sure this man will be apprehended? Have you invited someone that bought a vehicle for him? We are going to look into that. But let's go into these articles to understand what is this bandit leader saying. Now, the article is, so notorious bandit leader Bedo Turuji has challenged Nigeria Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Gwaben Mosa, to enlist a Sokoto-based Islamic cleric, Mortanda Asada, to confront his armed group on the battlefield. In a video obtained by Shara reporters, Turuji directly called on the cleric to face his men on the battlefield, further intensifying tensions in the region. The bandit leader whose terror group has been responsible for numerous attacks across northern Nigeria, specifically uh, referenced Asada's role, challenging him to take a stand beyond religious preaching and engage directly in combat. In the video, the bandit kingpin also responded to a post by security analyst Bulama Bukati, addressing accusations that they imposed 30 million levy on the residents of Moriki town in Zamfara state. He said, this is his reply. My name is Bello Turji. I greet all the good Muslims of the world. I thank God that we, we are among them. I greet my people from Zamfara, Sokoto, Kastina, Niger, Kaduna, and Kebi states. I thank God that we remain in good spirit with you all. My people, this is what I have been saying. I will continue to say it, whether they like it or not. To those who disagree with our words, I urge patience. We tell the haters to be more patient. You slaves of the West. I heard of someone named uh, Bundama Bukati, who also made, who made a statement alleging that Ben Otuji imposed taxes on the people of Moriki. By God's will, all that he said is true. However, he mentioned only one reason, that they chase our cattle. That is not the full story. Call whoever told you this and speak to my people for a proper conversation. Then you can judge fairly. Why would you allow your people to tell you one side story and rush to tell the public? You are a slave of the West and you, you along with Bendo, should know that the tax we impose on Moriki people is 50 million. Now, let me explain before I go further. 
This is a band, this is man is a bandit leader. He's now challenging almost everybody in Nigeria. He imposed taxes on communities, they control communities, they say government are sponsoring them. They are challenging the chief of defense staff of Nigeria, Musa Christopher. They are challenging him that common man, you can't do anything. We put levy, we put tax 50 million on a community who disturb our you know cattle movement. This is happening in Nigeria. This is September 2024. This is not 1990. This is not in the year 2000. Why the security agencies are not looking at these people? They are focusing on um, Okoma community. They are focusing on the Southeast. They are focusing on different parts of Nigeria. What is actually wrong? This country is not a normal country. It's not a normal country. We are still waiting for the CDS to do you know what he says he's going to do. Look at this man is challenging you. He's in the same country with you. You have your men everywhere. What are you waiting for CDS? Because you see on this social media, we are going to drag you. We are going to remind you of this challenge. If you know you are not sponsoring this man, if you know that the government are not sponsoring this man, as this man and this, he said it by himself. I'm not the one saying it. He said, your people are sponsoring him. You can't do anything. So if you people are not sponsoring him, we are watching. And we want you to do that you said you are going to do. Now, the article continues. Beno Tuji is talking. Say, so you speak about the people of Moriki, but you didn't, you didn't mention how they kill our cattle. Listen carefully. People of Moriki, I am warning you. They didn't employ soldiers from Enugu Port Harcourt to kill our people just to make you happy. Why the West Nave publish it to the public? Tell us what our cattle did in June and July when they were killed. They didn't invade anyone's home. They were grazing when they were shot and killed in broad daylight. So these people are avenging for cattle in Zamfara community that they are grazing and people kill their cattle. So the community now or the country, the northern part of Nigeria, they are going to take over, you know, do everything they want to do. No, I think it's more than this. They are using cattle to pretend or to do something that is not, uh, you know, nega. Let's continue to read the article. Stay with me. Now, this is where he talks to um, Musa Assad direct, where he talks to uh, Christopher Musa. This is what a bandit leader said. The article reads, reacting to Motanda Asada comment, Turji said, I am calling on our leader, General Christopher Musa, with a strong voice. Give Motanda Asada a weapon, even if it is just a local vigilante weapon, and let him come and confront us. Let him come and face us and look at the former minister. Check Isa Pentami. I have a video of him saying people in the government were unbelievers. But after they appointed him as minister, when did you last hear from him? This shows his compromise all his belief and teachings, he said. Toji in a previous video alleged that the issue of insecurity plunging the country had the full backing of the immediate past governor of Zamfara State and current minister of state for defense. He said, he had evidence to support his claim, alleging that the past govern government under Matawande was well known to everyone in the region. Speaking in Hausa, he said, My name is Mohamed Bello Tuji. I am releasing this video to reach all Nigerians, from the leaders to the poor. This is the message I want to convey to everyone. The issue of insecurity plunging our country has the full backing of the immediate past government of Zamfara State. I have evidence to support this claim. The past government under His Excellency Bello Matawande Maradon, State Minister of Defense, is well known to everyone in the region. This government has been complicit in backing terrorism. There are individuals from Shenkafi, Zomi, and Esa who cannot deny the video. Many Nigerians, for example, those in Bauchi or Kaduna, may not be aware of the problems in Zamfara. However, I want to assure the federal government that if they are unaware, I will provide names, details, and evidence. I urge them to investigate the past action of these individuals and, the, and their decision, oh sorry, discussion with them as citizens of the zone, not West. I swear before God that I speak the truth. The past government of Zamfaronda Matawande facilitated negotiations but also sabotage efforts. There were multiple negotiations, but the dialogue did not succeed because everyone in Shenkafi and Esa knows the truth. The late Dilu, for example, was chased away by me because he refused to allow peace to reign in Shenkafi. 
They passed more than 200 rifles and Matawande invited them to the government house. If I am lying, there um, are still in people in government, there are still people in government house that can explain this. And this is from number one, you don't want the terrorist in Nigeria, uh, Bello Turje. He's saying that, come on, um, the chief of defense staff, you can't do me anything. Your people are sponsoring me. Your people are sponsoring me. <laughs> and now we switch gears to security matters. A recent uh, document alleging security payments to bandit leaders by the Zamfara state government has continued to generate reactions. The letter, which is widely being circulated via so several social media platforms, claims the Zamfara state government has earmarked millions to be paid to several bandit leaders as part of an approach to addressing the escalating insecurity situation in the state. And now to discuss this, we're joined by security uh, uh, expert Catch Ononuju. Catch, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you for doing this with us. Um, first of all, let's just you know take it a bit back and uh, and help us give a bit of historical context of uh, banditry and government responses in, in Zamfara State. How credible is the allegation of payments to bandit leaders? Are there any previous instances or patterns that support or contradict this this claim? Problem right now that everybody is complaining about is not a new problem. I want to tell the world that I believe the Nigerian government has failed in its quest to actually look after the local people. This is not a new problem. This problem has been here for a very long time. President Buhari has tried about seven different schemes to try and actually gain land to resettle this displaced refugees who came in from Mali, Central African Republic, Burkina Faso, and other countries. But he did not gain any uh, positive results. And so I believe now that we have come back again under pressure. If Tinibu does not solve it properly, you will see is this random killing every day by the Fulani and refugees who are seeking for land. And I don't think this is the right way to gain land in any West African country. That's why I believe the leaders failed. If they were never able to resettle the Fulani refugees in Central Mali or Central African Republic, and they came to Nigeria, this is what we're now having. They are being forced to kill in order to gain land to resettle themselves by force. This is not a way to run a country. I think this is wrong. We must take initiative to no, save the house out I'm, I'm going to uh, catch this can't continue catch I'm, I'm going to ask you again uh because you you didn't answer my earlier questions uh, with the historical context how credible is this uh allegation of payments to bandits have there been any previous instances or patterns that sort of support or contradict this claim yes or no yes yes this to bandits was a strategy adopted by the Buhari administration to keep the Fulani militia men on because the militia people needed money. And that payment by government to them, initiated by President Buhari, was the original way to give them money. If they don't give them money directly, they will engage in kidnappings. All right. And the Nigerian government didn't like kidnappings as a way. Remember, the schools in Kankara, the payment to them, all those were arranged. They kid mass kidnapping of youth and then the subsequent kidnapping, the payments. Those payments where money is being given to these terrorists for them to augment whatever it is that they needed. But they were not able to gain this trust of the government who were giving them money because no matter how much money you give them, they will always renege on agreements. And that's right. why so, the government stopped paying them. Cat, Catch, let me ask you, right? You just said that, he, that, that there's some sort of truth to these claims. So what are the potential policy implications for Zamfara state government and the federal government? How the might such payments affect... Simple. The governors have collectively said they will no more pay these damn terrorists. The more you pay them, the more you strengthen them. The more they buy new weapons. The more they buy new logistics. Don't pay them. Let them go back to their country. We cannot continue to live like this now, uh, as if we are living under uh, 
you know, uh, we were like, this illegal arrangement is just not playing the country. Yeah. So I agree that the governor should say no, even if they've ever done it tonight. Now that Buhari is gone, nobody will be killed. I don't think that the Kiliba administration harbors the same kind of mind share as the Buhari administration. So let us try to save the farmers. Now you're seeing from not paying them, they now don't want the farmers back to their lands. So there's no farming. And that has forced food insecurity across Nigeria. Even they won't even allow them to go and harvest. This is the problem. Once you start paying terrorists, you can never stop. So right. the right thing is, Nigeria needs a proper policy to actually go against this people. It's been done in Burkina Faso. It's been done in Senegal. It's been done in Mali. It's been done in Niger. Why is the Nigerian government still embracing terrorists? Now, this uh, is wrong. Okay, cut, 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 cut. I believe what is happening to the houses under our watch is a shameful thing, to say the least. The houses should not be allowed uh, to suffer the way we allow them to suffer. Catch. This is unfair. Catch. All their land, Catch. right from Cassina to I must Zambara say to at to this point that oh, we do not know the identities of the bandits. Terrorists think they can take uh, the catch. land and drive away the farmers into IDP camps. And the government is doing nothing. This is not a way to run the government. All right. Now, I must put out something here. It's very important that we have to do this. We do not know the identities of who these bandits are. And so we cannot say they're from Niger or neighboring countries. We don't know them. We don't know them by their names or their uh, nationality or their origins or state of origins. Let's just be clear on their, their identity for that. But uh, Catch, many thanks for coming on. We appreciate you for, for doing this with us.